Today I want to add to our application uh, ability to filter pictures by clicking on our tags here. Now they're not doing anything, it's just a static list of tags and uh, I want uh, on click to be able to see all the pictures with this label. And we will start again with our backend. We will add filtering to our uh, Get Photos API. So let's start our backend. Uh, in our Get Photos, here where we're getting from uh, query parameters, these two parameters, I want to get one more. And this parameter will be tag or label or whatever you can call it. Uh, whatever you prefer. This tag we will pass to our scan to filter all the pictures. So uh, when we will do this request, uh, we will filter all the pictures that have this tag. So let's see um, in the documentation for DynamoDB how do we do filtering. So this is documentation for JavaScript SDK. And here it is. So our filter expression, we want to filter everything that contains subtitle with this value. And so let's try to implement it in our get photos filter expression. Let's copy it over. Here, subtitle, uh, we will replace with our column that contains our tags and here will be the tag. So what it's, what's the name of this table? I do not remember. Let's open our AWS console. Let's go to Dynamo, explore items. That's our table. And we have this table, this column uh, named labels. So here we are having these labels. And we want to check for a tag. Actually, let's call it label just for consistency. And now we need to assign the value. We are doing it with, uh, let's open our documentation. This is ex expression attribute values. And here we are just doing the following. We're just adding this object uh, and our label will be label. Let's try to test it. If we go to our postman and type localhost and then we are having label that is equal, let's say, what do we have there? A head. And we are getting two items that contain this tag. And if we delete it, we most probably will get an error because it expects us not to be empty, this thing. So we need to add it using conditional expression. So again, let's create a variable and if tag then we add these two things and if not it's empty object and we again do the structuring let's try again tag is not defined mm. oh yes I, again i call it tag but it should be the label I'm sorry. So let's check now. And yes, now we're getting plenty of items, all of them actually. And if we get the label head, we get two of them. And if we get another one, let's say, what do we have? A cat. Let's get a cat. And we're getting our cat images you see in all these images we get the label cat but you know there is a little problem with this way of getting our images uh, if i set the limit let's say five 
and I change this to head again, uh, you expect, like, I mean, logically, you expect to get this picture where we have a head la label and this one where we also have a head label. But if I test it, we are getting only one image. And we expect at least two because we have limit five. But the uh, thing is that DynamoDB works a bit different, not like SQL databases where you expect your database first perform the filtering and then limit. And uh, here it's the opposite. First, it just fetches five items and then it filters these five items. So uh, let's say if in these first items there is no uh, tag, which one? Blonde? I'm not blonde, but I don't know why it tagged me as a blonde. So let's try. Then uh, we get zero items because in first five items there is no picture with tag blonde. So that's the problem, isn't it? There is a workaround uh, that we could implement here. Uh, every time uh, we are filtering for a tag with a limit, uh, we can uh, check if our request uh, returned us five items or 10, whatever the limit, then we just return them to, uh, to the client. Uh, but if it returned less, then we do another request and we scan next n items and then filter them and again and again and again until we are getting the amount of images that we want to get. This is, you know, not very performance friendly, but that's the workaround that uh, can uh, let you do what you want to do with this type of databases. So let's try to do it. Uh, let's uh, create a util function for this. Uh, it's going to be a synchronous function. And uh, what we expect? We expect our parameters, um, the same ones that we are passing here to our scan. And uh, then we want to get a result of previous fetch. And let's default it to empty array. And so uh, what we're going to do, we're going to copy this thing to our function and we're gonna import DynamoDB same way as here from our providers. We just need to do this and here, here we pass our parameters and then when we get our results if result items are less than params limit we have limit there right yeah we have the limit so if it is less then we want to call our function again we will return and yeah, we need to, to do it a bit different here. We need to do it this way. So we can call it again. And we call it with the same parameters. And this will be our previous results, but not just itself, but items. So array of our images. And another thing, important thing here that we should pass our last evaluated key from the results. So let's change it a little bit. 
let's spread our parameters and we will add this this exclusive start key so uh, we start querying not from the beginning here we will pass results here we'll pass results and last related key and actually we're gonna do it only in case if we have if we have this last related key and if we already got enough then we just return our items yeah but here here we have to create our items and we will merge we merge previous items and a new ones result items so we are kind of accumulating them and here we pass not just result items we pass all of them and here we return we return items and we can just return last key for our pagination again just like just like here you know it's gonna be this one primary key and we export it so let's try let's try to see if it's gonna work so let's import it to our get photos And now here, instead of this call, we just do um, we just do this fetch filter. And I don't think we need the promise. We just need to fetch filter. And for more, for better visibility, for better understanding, let's console log some stuff. Let's console log our results. And let's see. So you remember now when we tried to get tag blonde, we didn't get anything. Now let's just in case restart our server and let's test our function. Okay, request is sending. Takes a bit long. Here we are getting our results. And it doesn't have items with capital. It's now just this. And here last key is just... just results last key i think that's how it should be and if you take a look here it just endlessly continues to scan from the same point i think it's because in the function in the fetch filter i forgot something okay after uh, some time of debugging and looking at the screen and wondering what's wrong i figure out it's exclusive start key not exclusive start key but uh, typos are happening all the time with the best of us so now when i fix the typo let's try again so you see we got our picture and if you take a look at our server logs uh, you see uh, first results were empty and uh, it returned our last evaluated key and the second result the result of second call had this one item in array and if we try a different tag for example if we pass head here and we go to our logs uh, you again can see actually it should should return two 
okay I found one more um, one more mistake here should be items length and yeah now should work correctly let's try again and now we're getting an error because we want to return primary key of undefined let's add this question mark here and finally we got our two uh, two pictures and if you take a look at the logs you see the first one returns us one item then second one returns one more and then the last one returns no items and no last evaluated key and because we don't have this last evaluated key our recursive function stops it breaks the circle and returns uh, the whole bunch of items it found it filtered so that's how we can implement filtering uh, with DynamoDB this is a workaround so let's commit our stuff and in the next video I will show you how we will handle this on the front end. Thank you for watching the video. I hope it was useful for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.